Have you ever witnessed mist rolling through the fields? Have you ever seen a red sun in June? Everywhere in New England, there were signs that summer was here. Everything had come to life. Leaves rustled on the trees. Wildflowers dotted the fields and roadways. And birds soared through the air and you could hear them singing through the day and well into the night. I was looking forward to the next few months of long days, golden sunsets, impromptu adventures, and simple, lazy afternoons in the heat. The first thunderstorm of the summer had arrived, and I crossed another item off my summer bucket list as I watched it roll in at one of my favorite places. An hour later, Kevin and I headed back and we were treated to hazy skies, misty landscapes, and a strawberry sun. Wildfires in Canada were casting New England in a shroud of smoke. It was ominous, yet beautiful, the way it made the sun burn deep red and the sunlight a hazy, rosy glow. It was during this time that I found myself photographing a counseling center down the road from our old neighborhood in Connecticut. Since moving to Mass two years ago, I've been back to our old neighborhood a few times. It's always a painful mix of familiarity and wistful longing, wanting to go back to the life we had there, yet knowing that everything has changed since we left. After finishing my client shoot, I made some time to stop by a few of the places I would often frequent. The first was home to one of my favorite New England landscapes, a small pond which reflected the yellow barn and farmhouse that lived on the opposite shore. This scene was so much fun to watch change through the seasons. And directly behind that yellow barn was one of my favorite graveyards. things I love about New England are the graveyards. They are plentiful, but so many of them are tiny plots tucked away, and unless you're paying attention, you wouldn't even know that they're there. I suppose it's weird, 
but graveyards are some of my favorite places to visit. In a world of constant noise, busyness, and overcrowdedness, it's the one place that you're almost always guaranteed the opposite of all those things. It's a place of stillness, emptiness, and quietness. A place where you can just breathe, be alone, and listen. There's something so special about rural graveyards like this one. They're full of history with their generations of family plots, and many of the graves themselves are covered with beautiful folk art. This graveyard is hauntingly beautiful the way it's tucked beside a farm pasture. I paused and watched the birds swoop in and out of the grass. And even though I can hear the whir of cars in the background, this place still feels isolated. I am alone with the haunting beauty of it all. I hear the breeze whispering in the pines, the bees buzzing in the grass, and the birds singing merrily in the trees. I know I should leave and that traffic is starting to get bad, but there's still one more place I wanted to visit. It's another small preserve tucked off the main road through Middlebury. It was a place I had actually shot one of my very first vlogs all those years ago. Walking the trail, I reflected on the years I'd spent here. I actually hated living over here because it was so busy, yet I do miss these places. For a few years, this place was my home, and I did make some wonderful memories here and meet some amazing people. Everything back then was new to me, and I spent so many early mornings exploring nearby parks and towns. I miss the people, the trails, I miss the back road rides. I even miss the little busy neighborhood of Oakville. I was in my happy place all June long as I traveled around Connecticut working with many amazing clients. Clients like Michelle, who works in construction and is an up and coming thought leader. And women like Shell, who help couples navigate the financial side of divorce. These compassionate change makers inspire me to try harder and do better. Weekends in June were reserved for road trips around New England and discovering new places both near and far. Places like the Trumbull House in Coventry, Connecticut. 
Though the day we decided to visit, it was incredibly hot and there were no clouds in the sky. So needless to say, we did not stick around very long. And on a hot Sunday in mid-June, I was able to cross another item off my summer bucket list, getting an ice cream cone. How often are we truly present? How often do we actually notice what's around us? How often do we open our eyes and see? On a dreary Saturday afternoon, with camera and colored pencils in hand, Kevin and I went to explore a new park and use our artist powers to observe. Lately, it seems like nature has been sending me countless reminders. On this day, it sent me a wonderful reminder about the power of simply being in the moment and noticing what surrounds you. It wasn't long before I was completely immersed in my surroundings. I'd been here before, but I'd never had the chance to really take it all in. As we sat by the waterfall, I spent a long time simply observing all the details that were so easy to overlook. The pools of water that collected between the rocks and that had become the home to water bugs. The lush moss and plant life that covered the rocks. The many smaller waterfalls that cascaded beside the main fall. I always say that the thing I love most about art and learning mediums like photography and videography is that it's taught me how to see. I look at the world in a completely different way now. I've learned to see the details around me. I've learned to see color, shape, texture, and form. And more than anything, I have truly come to observe and understand light. I've seen the magic that it creates. We spent countless hours roaming the park, picking spots to sit, draw and just observe what was there. And though it wasn't the most epic adventure, it was one of my favorite days in June. The golden afternoons and summer adventures were only just beginning. 
There was still so much more to come and so much that I was looking forward to. I can't wait to share what happens next with you.